So hi, everybody. Um, now that we have it recorded, um, if you're just coming in, please mute yourself as you come in. Uh, that would be most beneficial to everybody. Um, I, I, I'm sorry that I, I missed the setting so that um, you don't automatically get muted as you come in. Um, I hope that doesn't really um, turn things up when uh, we really get going here. Um, like I just said, my name is Patrick Harrison. Uh, I'm the owner and operator of Harvey Beekeeping. This is the first of, I believe, eight uh, classes that I'm going to be putting on. Uh, and part of an entire uh, beekeeper short course. Um, it's accompanied with three in-person field classes. One in one, you get your bees in about late April, in June, and in August uh, to cover spring management, summer management, and fall management, so that we're not talking about winterizing honeybee colonies now while our snow is melting as we're coming out of winter. Um, so to, to get that ball going. Um, um, so to get started, uh, just for people that are coming in, um, sorry to keep saying it, but if you can mute yourself, that would be great. Um, and open up the chat. Um, and uh, I'll take questions at the end of the, of the class. So we're going to cover uh, a couple things today. Um, who is in the hive? I'm going to go real basic beekeeping biology or honeybee biology, uh, covering who are the individuals that we are dealing with when we're dealing with honeybee colonies um, and what are their basic life cycles. Uh, and then we'll go into uh, another discussion of what, what will com come next. That basic life cycle will really take on the bulk of this class. Uh, Check that chicken. Um, if you can mute yourself, please, thank you. Uh, and then I'll take questions at the end of the class. Um, so who is in the hive? Um, there's actually four and I'm missing a slide. Um, we have our honeybee queen. Um, she is the only fertile female, meaning she's the only one that's able to lay eggs. Uh, we have all of our workers, she, which takes up the bulk of the colony. Uh, we deal with worker bees. Uh, those are non-fertile females. Genetically, they are the exact same as the queen. Uh, we're gonna get into exactly why that is the case. Uh, and they do everything from feeding the young larva to building comb to foraging for nectar and pollen and water. And then we have drones. Drones are the males of the colony. They're there for adding, um, they're really there for genetic diversity within the colony. Um, the book that we, uh, that is attached to the, this class, excuse me, um, does mention that they are probably used in temperature regulation uh, within the colony. Um, but I, I, I'm guilty of being one of those beekeepers that, um, that would say that they're really there only for genetic material um, and the, the spread and um, the further diversity of the overall bee, honeybee population. Um, so to start with drone, uh, sorry, to start with the queens, um, they are the only fertile females of the colony. Um, they are the ones that lay all of the eggs. They are the mother of all of the bees inside that colony. And then in doing so, they also are the pheromone control of the hive. What all that means is um, let's say if it's the human body, the, if there was one central place uh, that all of, uh, for which all of the cells of your body come from, um, 
the queen would be that central place. So if you were to look at the colony as an individual and all of the workers as the cells of that individual, then all of the cells are coming from that one central location. Hey, Patrick. Sorry to interrupt. interrupt. Um, we, I'm going to take questions at the end. Um, Patrick, we stay muted. Your slides. Sorry, what? You're we not can't sharing see the slides. Oh, sh no, you can't see the slides. Couple. Sorry, Benjamin, to jump on the end. You were probably saying that you can't see the slides. And it's I, not I, full screen either. Yeah, I only see the title. Now, now it's advancing. But it's very small, and we only see like a one inch by one inch. There we go. Perfect. And with COVID cases still averaging about 16,000 a day in California, officials are understandably nervous about the Super Bowl becoming a super spreader event. And based on the map, are we able to get an email of this? Yes. Are, um, Let me pull up some more faces. Thumbs up. If uh, Lisa, that you can see me. All right, Sarah, you guys see you. All right. Um, great. I'm so sorry about that. Um, there wasn't very many photos um, to as we went over the agenda. Um, a really a list of what what I just talked about, um, and then I was discussing only the queen. Um, the the queen is the 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 central producer of all of the worker bees of that colony. Um, she's the mother of all of the all of them and the, the regulator of all of the pheromones. Um, the cell in which uh, for which she comes comes um, is a little larger. Um, if you look in this uh, sorry, if you look in this photo in the top right here, uh, you can see those peanut shaped uh, protrusions from that frame of, of wax. Those are developing queens. Like I said before, the, the genetics between a worker and a queen are the exact same. Um, what happened in this colony is the queen actually died. So the colony went into emergency procedures to create a new queen feeding uh, different food to what would have otherwise been a worker, turning those workers into queens, extending those cells to create those queens. So there's really, there's very little difference other than nutrition that makes a queen a queen and a worker a worker. Um, workers. And this is where we're going to spend a little bit of, of uh, a bulk of the time here. Um, they do everything uh, in in the colony, from building the wax to feeding, developing, and developing bees and foraging for all of the resources that are used in the hive. So, um, if you look in this photo here, you can see the the queen is marked red. Uh, she's walking around the uh, frame here to to lay eggs while um, the workers are going about doing certain, excuse me, doing certain tasks. Um, and then there's drones where the, um, uh, kind of went into a little bit where they don't necessarily add to the production of that individual colony, but allowing those drones to live in the hive, um, enable the entire population of honeybees in the area to prosper. So the more drones, the more males that the honeybee queen mates with, the more genetic diversity that's inside the hive, which leads to much more productive colonies in the long term. So there's, management practices that would advocate for removing the drones. Um, I would advocate not to do so. Um, I'm not doing that. And 
you can see in the, the left, or sorry, the right photo, um, nice tall hives full of honey. Um, that was an awesome year, um, making a lot of honey because there was a lot of bees. There was a lot of bees because there was a lot of drones. There was a lot of drones because the, there was a lot of bees, kind of like one feeding on the other. So we're gonna go over the life cycle um, of the bee itself and the colony itself. Um, there's really those two individual life cycles that need to be understood to properly manage honeybee colonies. Um, and it's, it's kind of redundant and a little, re it, it's important to know that life cycle. Um, it would be as if I were to go about and, uh, and describe to you the parts of a tomato plant and tell you that the roots soak up water, the stem holds the entire plant up, the leaves photosynthesize. That's real first grade material. Um, and that's been ingrained into us since first grade, um, since the, the fact that the honeybees uh, and their life cycle hasn't been ingrained since first grade, um, we need to go over that. Um, so the life cycle of the individual, let me take some water. Um, an egg is laid inside of a cell. Um, that cell, that egg hatches after three days, which turns into a larva. Uh, that larva, if you were to compare it to a butterfly, that larva is the caterpillar stage of the of the honeybee um, or the maggot stage of the honeybee. Um, they really are all very similar uh, being that they are all insects. Uh, then there's the pupa, which also is uh, a cinnamon to um, cap brood. Uh, we'll go over what brood means in a moment, uh, but the pupa stage is when the bee is metamorphosizing into what will become an adult honeybee. So that's the, the chrysalis stage if where you were to compare it to that butterfly. Uh, and then after 21 days, an adult worker honeybee emerges. So there's different time, um, there's different speeds that it takes for the different classes of bees to develop. Uh, workers are the quickest, uh, being in a total of 16 days. Drones are the slowest uh, for a total of 24. Excuse me, workers are right there in the middle with 21. Um, knowing that fact will tie into the pests and diseases uh, talk. I, I believe it's um, class number four or three. Um, the word brood is just a word to describe the young or developing or babies of a species. So a bird's brood is protected in the nest until it's hatched and can feed itself after one or two years. Um, the human brood stays at home until it's 25 because it can't afford rent on its own. Um, but um, so the, the brood is, are those developing bees uh, in the egg, larva, or capped stage, or the pupa stage. Cap brood, pupa, it, they're um, interchangeable languages there. So we're going to really dive into um, the worker class here. Um, 99% of the bees that make up the hive are workers. So most of what you're dealing with are workers. Um, the way that the workers look and the, the actions that the workers are taking gives you information on the health of the overall colony. Um, if you can't find eggs in the colony um, or the larva, don't look well fed. That could mean 
queen issues. Um, and that's going to be discussed in a in the disease and, and pest lecture. But to understand that workers are really the ones that you're paying attention to. Um, people get caught up in, oh, I can't find the queen. Or, you know, I don't have a queen because I didn't see her. Um, most of the photos that I show you um, have the queen because I pull out my phone and snap a photo of her when I see her. But um, I could go, I, I, I could go an entire season without seeing a queen if I um, wasn't doing, you know, you can go an entire season uh, without seeing a queen because she's just one bee amongst 60,000. Um, and so at about three o'clock, she's there at this one photo. Um, she's very obvious there, but um, she could be very elusive sometimes. Um, so the, the four most major jobs, and I know the book broke it down into, um, I think almost eight or nine, um, are nurse hive builders, which are the wax producers of the colony, guards and foragers. Um, I'm gonna spend some time on those four. So the, the nurse bees. Nurse bees are the youngest of them, youngest of all of the workers. Um, what happens is uh, an adult honeybee emerges and she actually goes through all of these jobs as her life goes on. So week one, she's a nurse. Week two, she's a hive builder. Then she's a guard and then forager. Uh, it's not like the bee movie where she's given a job and then she's that job for life. Um, no, the, the, the bees within zero to um, 24 days, um, 24 very much max, um, are nurse bees. Um, those nurse bees are they have a special gland that produces food for larva. So they will actually consume the pollen that's in the hive. The gland will produce and secrete, secrete food that the larva eat. Um, larva don't actually eat pollen directly. They eat the secretion from the glands of the nurse bees. Um, that age um, fact is really key to um, why I'm selling nukes for, um, this season and I don't sell packages. Um, a package of bees is three pounds of bees in a box with a queen uh, where there's no comb, there's no brood, there's no larva. All those bees are um, relatively old or mix in age, mixed up in age. Uh, they take about a week to get to you after they're removed from the colony from wherever they're coming from, then shipped to you. And then it will take that about a week to get to you. Um, and then your bees, your nurse bees aren't, um, nurses anymore because they're already two weeks old and they're unable to produce that larva food. Um, and that's, that's a major issue with package failure um, in, the, in the early season with many new beekeepers. And that's why I'm selling um, nucleus colonies over packages. Second, we have hive builders. Um, hive builders are wax producers. So there's a second gland that the honeybee has. Um, it's right on the underside of the abdomen. You can see it in that top right hand photo uh, where she's actually secreting little like fish scale flakes of beeswax. Um, and that's what beeswax is. It's a secretion from the honeybee. Um, if you were to look closely, all those little, the, the hex, hexagonal shape in that, that comb there, um, those are cells. Um, you don't have, 
you you don't have a place the queen doesn't have a place to lay eggs if there's no wax um and if there's no wax then there's no place to lay eggs and there's no nothing for the nurses to do so that wax building age group or age cohort of bees is, is super vital to um, an overall healthy colony. So if it's early spring and your bees aren't building out wax, that's something to note and that's something to, to be paying attention to. Um, come, come April when you get your bees and then in May, you're gonna be feeding sugar syrup um, we're and to build that wax comb. And uh, if they're not doing that, well, then you'd be asking questions as to why you're, why they aren't building comb. Is there something wrong? Are they missing something? Um, and that could be a nutrition issue. That could be nutrition in new issue in the way of pollen or nectar. Um, so knowing that there is a group of bees that are wax builders is, is very important. Second to last, we have guards. Um, guards defend the colony, obviously. Um, the, all the bees in the hive know that they are half sisters to each other. So in a, a, a forager bee that's coming in empty handed, kind of gets checked to make sure that she's even allowed inside of that hive. And that's what's happening in this top right hand photo where those two guard bees are making sure that that one forager coming in is, um, is allowed to be there. Um, in early May, when there's a ton of nectar available and a forager bee comes in not empty handed and has a big honey stomach full of nectar. Um, she, she's allowed right in because she's gonna be adding something to the colony. Um, but in a late season, um, when there's less nectar available, things get a little heated on this bottom board. Um, and that actually right after I took this photo, um, those three bees started fighting uh, because that worker probably wasn't, that forager probably wasn't allowed to be there. Um, guard bees are the reason why we use smoke. Um, so looking at the, the top of that colony there, uh, you can see many, many workers. Um, a, a little bit of smoke will push those bees down into the colony. Um, it, Smoke really what it does is because bees communicate through pheromones and vibrations, you're diluting those alarm pheromones that those guards are putting out um, in the way that um, it, would, it would be as if you were playing loud music during a break-in. Um, of course, you'd hear the loud music and know that somebody's breaking in, but it's kind of kind of diluting those alarm pheromones. They're, they're confused. Um, so I know, I know it's clear that um, it's a different colony, the after smoke photo. Um, but right in the bottom right hand corner where those black frames are is where I put the smoke and those wooden frames, I did not put any smoke. So I did just a sm small bit of smoke on those black frames and all the bees turned and went down into the hive. And there's very few on those plastic black frames, whereas there are many on those wooden frames and that's because of smoke. Um, lastly, we have foragers. Foragers, foraging is the most dangerous job a worker honeybee colony, a worker could have. Um, and that's why it's the last job that a worker has, um, because they die while they're forging. Um, and so that's, it's really the reason why they only live about five weeks, um, in the summertime. The bees that were born in September and October 
are still alive now because they were not foraging um, because there was really nothing to forage on and they were in their winter cluster staying warm not not going out and doing dangerous tasks like foraging colony brings in three things water pollen and nectar um, that's going counterclockwise starting with water on the left um, you can see a bucket of water with a bag in it. Um, bees also get their, their minerals through the water that they drink. So that dirty water that I left out, um, the bees are drinking up and, and bringing that, that water back into the hive. Um, you can see the orange dot on the like orange blob on the back hind legs of that bee coming in. Um, that orange blob is pollen. She bundled it up, all those small pollen grains um, onto her, um, her leg hairs to be able to carry back. And then lastly, we have what we know and love is um, a bee on goldenrod nectar. Um, that bee is probably foraging for the nectar of that goldenrod to be brought back, made into a honey. Um, so nectar is honey, pollen is pollen, water is water. It's kind of obvious, of course. Um, so the, the nectar is turned into honey, which is the carbohydrates, the, the power source of the hive. Um, if a bee is starving, um, it's because a lack of calories or sugar um and that's just something to to pay attention to um some things that i hear um hear a lot um is there's there's a pollen dearth a, a time with no pollen um where that they oh so they're not making honey but they could be making honey because honey is made of nectar not pollen uh, pollen is the protein source of the hive. It's the building blocks of the new bees. So to bring in those amino acids and those proteins, um, that's through pollen. Uh, water is used for two things. Like I said, minerals um, in a very minute sense. If the book mentions it, I'd be surprised. It's extremely small. Um, and then also the main thing is for cooling the colony. Um, here's an extreme case of a hot day where um, the bees were cooling that, that hive um, and they were, most of the bees were outside of the hive while fanning what water was brought in and then fanning that water out to bring that water, uh, bring the heat off of the hive while that water evaporates. Same way that we sweat and that sweat evaporates off our skin, taking the heat with it. So I'm gonna open up to questions. Um, I do wanna mention that we have a class next Thursday, which is gonna be the overall life cycle of the colony. Um, I, I have bees for sale. Um, it'd be best to send me an email to in in ordering these um i'd like to know people's suggestions on this class um of course i have some of my own the muting issue and then not having the actual screen share up um i'm really sorry about that um and um <clears throat> i have that the the syllabus that's posted on on my website with the the suggested book uh, I have American Bee Journals and Bee Cultures um, at my store in Newton. I'm subscribed to both of them. So I have about five years worth of them. Um, consider the first one free. As long as you become a customer of either one of those magazines um, to keep those magazines alive, I'd like to retire reading them. Um, still staying with questions. I'd like to thank, thank Kate Kleinley for de-dyslexing this PowerPoint. 
Um, she's awesome. She's muted because um, her Wi-Fi is not great. Um, I'm going to end the sharing of the screen and the recording.